It's great to be back. I remember in 2014 and September, we were nine people in a room in takeoff in Geneva talking about what if we started Laura Lines. And then we met Johan and started off the Things Conference to see where we are. It's amazing. And today I will continue the journey and start about what we are working on in Semtech and how the LoRa technology has evolved. Um, and for this, we have been starting to focus on supply chain, on products that moves around the world. Um, then you basically have the challenge that the infrastructure is moving. So how do we actually address that market? Well, 2.4 is a worldwide frequency. Um, with LoRa, well, it's a perfect combination because the 2.4 gigahertz space is pretty crowded. It's noisy. It's a lot of information, uh, proprietary solution. So LoRa modulation is very, very robust and resilient towards interference and have an amazing link budget of 136 dB, giving you a pretty good range. But to kickstart a new wave, you need tools. So of course, Semtec has been working on uh, different tools. We are working with software modems, introducing into the parts, like we have in the ecosystem, I will show what we have been doing and how fast it goes to use it. It's software defined, so it's basically just put in a normal architectures, MCU, and off you go. We have mobile gateways to ensure that it follows the goods. Uh, it will come and be announced, but the first is the reference designs for gateway and the world's first um, uh, LoRa 2.4 uh, gateways available. So that's how we sticked off. And as part of this, you need ecosystems. And one of the ones that we are talking about here today, we have several, but the one we're talking about is maritime industry. Because most goods are made out in different continents and are shipped around the world. So luckily, I'm Norwegian, and one day, come up, Fjellnerge. One day, a gentleman called me, or reached out at 11 p.m., a Friday evening. I say, I want LoRa, but it has to be on 2.4. And then the ball was running. So can you introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Jan. I'm from uh, Wilhelmsen in Oslo, Norway. And uh, I was uh, working uh, operating ships, but I also worked uh, in the Wilhelmsen technical department. And we have been searching for uh, a uh, wireless network for uh, ships. And uh, as Stoller said, I, I learned about LoRa about two years ago. And from my experience, uh, I have more than 30 years from building ships, sailing on ships, operating ships. And when I read the spec about LoRa, especially that it's working below the noise level, and on board ships, there's a lot of electrical noise, machinery noise, other noises. So, when you started to look for wireless, why did you go for LoRa? Have you looked at other uh, technologies before and did it work? Yeah, we, uh, I've been, we checked several solutions. And, uh, but the thing is that on board ships, you have a lot of verticals and, and we want to collect them for uh, ship operation. We wanted to use them for condition monitoring and stuff. And LoRa is low range, battery operated, and uh, it looked very good. Thanks. I will come back to you when we are talking about your ships. But we are currently building an ecosystem where we have more or less 50% of the merchant fleet. You are present in 2,200 locations around the world. So it's already a big ecosystem. Uh, so, of course, our strategy is enable LoRa, as I said, have many verticals, but en enable cost of reduction of operating and running ships through condition monitoring and environmental, like the IMO 2020 ruling, and get scrubbers and things in place to make sure things are working, while offering third party or directly uh, logistical services end to end. So that's the strategy, because logistic and track is trace is expensive. What if actually the operation of the ship and harbors can pay for asset tracking through the cost reduction operating the ship. That's the beauty of LoRa. So the journey that we started on is what Wilhelmsen is actually a very perfect representative about. 
you have customers at warehouses, you transport it to the harbors, you do the custom documentation, you bring it at the sea, you declare and supply services to the ship, you operate your own fleet, and then you deliver it to the end customers. There's a whole journey across the continents. So that's why 2.4 is needed to be a global, the products that follow around the world. So what is maritime? Maritime is a combination of asset tracking, uh, industrial 4.0, smart building. So after our discussions, you know, you're coming to me every single day and asking, where is my sense? Where can I buy this? What can I buy that? When we're starting up, it's, it's quite a lot of application at the moment that I'm chasing the ecosystem to build. Uh, so I hope I get some help in delivering solutions uh, to the maritime industry. But anything in smart building, I'm not going into the details, but uh, protocol converters, trackers, uh, condition monitoring, vibration sensors, and standard smart building sensors. That is going to be used on ships, cruise lines, and harbors. So this represents today what we are being working on, where we are the first ship, if you come back to that one. We are also running on, starting with the cruise ships, and of course the bases and harbors. So that's where we are today. And now I'll bring also up Richard from Multitech. Uh, as part of the, this race, when he called me at 11 o'clock, um, we need to deliver a solution, deliver fast. So he said that uh, this was basically when we want to move, that was in late April, around Christmas time, and we needed to have it up and running in January. So who do I call? I call people I know to get things running, and we needed to deploy. Well, let's deploy at least no later than February. Um, and of course, it was not possible. We ended up in March, but anyway, it was good. Um, so, we have Miltitech here. Um, Rickard, can you introduce yourself? Thank you very much. Rich Stanvik is the name. I deal with product management in Multitech. And um, Multitech, as you might know, uh, we've been around for a while. We're 50 years old today. Just a child compared to me. But it's interesting to see how things have evolved since. So, we have some footprint on the LoRa gateway side of things. I think in the TTN network, we. Interestingly enough, I think it's about a third of the TTN gateways out there are... Closer to us. Oh, sorry. About a third or so of the TTN gateways are actually from us. So what we've done is, in essence, take our existing conduit series of gateways, which is a modular design. We have, together with Semtech now, started the development of a plug-in card supporting 2.4 gig LoRa, and that's what I'm holding in my hand here, and this is what uh, will be active during the demonstration session later on today. It's great. Uh, let's come back to the, uh, your slides afterwards, and also say that all of this is live. We will work on this in the, the workshop. A lot of slides here will be very, very low level talk about, and then we we'll go into the details in the workshop uh, later on. Vicoti was the other company. Um, LoRa is seen as a small size package system. Condition monitoring doing 30 kilohertz um, um, frequency analytics on a LoRa device is a challenge. So basically that generates 1600 bytes that needs to be transferred to the cloud through a LoRa system. So what we do? Well, of course, we use the Semtech modem data fragmentation software where we basically refrag or defragment, oh, sorry, send fragments of data of 32 bytes, and we have a routine in the cloud that reprocesses it. So basically, we could develop this uh, sensor and have been installing it in this POC and also live for doing condition monitoring uh, of rotating devices. So we come to that, and uh, we gather the ecosystems, knowing now, and we'll talk to the ecosystem, but um, now was time to test out. So can you please tell me a little bit, Jon uh, uh, Helge, about what is your ship? Can you describe your ship? It's, uh, it's a row-row carrier. It's 200 meter long. It's 36 meter wide. It's built for the new Panama Channel. And uh, it has 13 cardex. And... Uh, it can carry as much as 8,000 cars, theoretically. 
and we carry everything which is rolling or on rollers. And this is a lot of space, a lot of volume, and for us to, if we want to collect data and use wires, it's, uh, it's not a good business case. And in Valenus Willems, there is a, a, something called one operation where we want to collect data to operate the vessel in a better way. And LoRa 2.4 is an enabler in that work because then we can uh, take all the verticals on board and collect them into a central place. Thank you. So it's a, quite a big of ship. A lot of metal. Uh, you have a lot of uh, sections, watertight, airtight. Uh, so it's quite a lot of challenge to actually cover on a ship. So we started with simple use cases, rotating and uh, rotating machines. So maybe go back. Oh, I don't know how to go back. But anyway, on top car deck, you have a lot of fans, 64 of them. And they pull out the, ox uh, so the exhaust from cars in, in the, uh, the rotor ship. So that's a perfect place to do uh, condition monitoring because it's very hard to get. We also did other projects where we were looking at uh, basically the water pumps, uh, thrusters, diesel generators, and so on and so on. But uh, now it was time to install a gateway. So can you describe your gateways? Uh, sure. And to pick up on what I said before, oh, thank you. I can hold it. <laughs> this is going to be tough. Thank you. So picking up on what I said before about the gateway, on the screen, the system architecture. On the left side, the end devices, sensors, actuators. In this case, some imagery of various sensors on board the vessel. The development board, you can see on our stand, which we use for, um, for demonstration purposes. And also a sensor that uh, Jon Helge can later on show to you. Radio access network and the network server residing in the TTN domain, TTI domain. Um, so the gateway acts as a packet forwarder to the TTN cloud, so nothing spectacular there. And we should say, by the way, that last year we had a workshop where we showed how to configure our gateway for the TTN and TTI backend. It's, it's pretty simple, it's a three-click operation and, and you're up and running. So we have a series of gateways. On the screen we have two of the uh, most commonly used ones. We have the conduit, the blue indoor model, and we also have an IP67 outdoor version of the same. And the latter is the one that we are looking at deploying now in, on the vessel. Of course, we have a secured payload from end to end as expected. So, the conduit first of all, I mentioned it's a modular design. It's been around for a while, so this design is proven. It's been it's been around for a number of years. It, it, it's been proven through empirical use. And as said, the modular design allows you to design your own proprietary plug-in card should you so wish. We supply the Conduit series with a number of plug-in cards, for instance, with LoRa and LoRaWAN. And what we've done here is basically, together with Semtech, started now the development of a dedicated card for 2.4 gig LoRa which we simply plug into the existing design. So the new component in this ecosystem is that plug-in card currently under development. And to take a little bit closer look at what we've done, today we have a 3 plus 1 channel card which is being demonstrated, containing no less than four Semtech transceivers, the system diagram on the top here. So it uses the 2.4 gig band, as we said before, Three plus one channels, we have optimized for best range by using spreading factor 12 for all channels here. Um, 10 dBm output before the antenna, and we're expecting about 500 or so N devices per card. Now, in this instance, we have one card per gateway. What we are looking at now is, going forward, further designs. 6 plus 1, and potentially actually going beyond that as well. But the 6 plus 1 card, basically containing a further set of transceivers on the M card, will up the amount of channels. And here, we are separating between using two spreading factors, spreading factor 12 and 10, to optimize between capacity and range. 
same output power, we are of course increasing the amount of end devices we can reach with this. So again today, the demonstration you're gonna see later on today is based on the three plus one card. The roadmap is now being drafted and we will in due course have a productized version of this or these plug-in cards. Thank you. Thank you. So now we have the sensor, we have the VQT sensor and we have the gateway. So then it's time to go back to the ship. So this is how a traditional row row ship is. To give an example, yeah, I have engineers and our team and they do technical stuff. So a person like me, he have to go and walk and do range testing. So on my basically health watch, uh, the first day I walked 42,000 steps, just to give you an idea of walking back uh, through the different um, floors. So it's a lot, it's a big ship. So basically we had uh, two gateways uh, on the top deck uh, and we had one in the engine room. The top deck is like we use single channels at, uh, in the beginning. So we knew to use two different to get frequency uh, redundancy. Um, and then we had one downstairs and we placed out, we went first around the ship and test with a different uh, receiving strength so we found out to cover a ship like this. We had it covered with three gateways, but we were recommended to use five gateways for redundancy and the lowest power consumption in the, in the system. That's quite amazing at 2.4, guys. It's all about metal and water shots. So as you can see, uh, I, when I started with this, I said to you on Helge, well, I think we need 10 to 15. And we installed the different sensor, walked around, and as you see, what was pretty cool was that we shipped all ahead of time. And we were going to spend a lot of time configuring and configuring, but the crew was so amazing that everything was installed when we arrived. So it was just a plug in the cables and everything worked. So as you can see, Jon Helge was quite happy because I was wrong. We covered it with three and not 15 gateways. So basically that was the team. And here we basically see some of the application. So afterwards, when we had tested with the sensor, we would let them run for nine months to capture the data and test out and the quality. And then we thought, well, what's the point of creating a $100 sensor if I have to set an engineer to install it? So that's where TTM came in and said, we have to have tools and provisioning tools that allow us to send it to the crew. So basically, on Helgem, you said, well, we have to test. So we shipped it to to China, to, Shen, to Shanghai, I think it was. And we sent it to uh, five sensors, and then suddenly, boop, there we were. So then we had installed the sensors, and suddenly we had the data flowing in, where we were actually measuring all the analytics, 1,600 bytes coming in, uh, and now suddenly we can do condition monitoring, measuring bearings, you can measure uh, if uh, you have unbalance, and so on and so on. So it works. We will go more into the details about how things are working. Uh, we start with these block diagrams we will talk, but of course this, is, this couldn't have been done without the amazing agility of TTN, how they put it together and work closely and solve this out. Uh, with VicoT and with Multitech that stepped in, it was amazingly fast to deliver, but the platform is not only about 2.4, it's also for all the oil bases and bases around. It's also LoRaWAN 868 and 915 and the rest. So even if you are not having 2.4 products, don't be shy. Uh, we are building this worldwide also on the normal traditional sub-gig LoRaWAN solutions. So everything is integrated in the TTN uh, architecture. And uh, there we start with the device. Um, and I understand how it is to be a, uh, an engineer with parts coming out all the time. And if we looked at the mistakes done in the past from Semtech, like here is some code and do this and do that. So now it was time to actually give you a software modem. Not hardware modem, but a software modem that actually are phi diagnost or agnostic and deliver the services you need to deliver the LoRaWAN and also some basic device management functions. 
We also need location information, and some devices have GPS, some doesn't. And there's a lot of use cases in harbors where we just want to detect if things are moving. So we're also using integration to Semtech cloud services uh, for LoRa cloud geolocation and device management, and so on and so on. So in this project, we have now been running these sensors for quite long. And uh, what I wanted to demonstrate here today is how do you do big file transfers? And we have been using this now on the ship for a very, very long time. And it works perfectly without any downtime. So it's really good retransmissions and so on. All of this will be available and will be announced uh, um, by our marketing team. So, but it is here. Um, then it comes to the software modem. And this is how basically Vico T, they had been doing LoRa bomb uh, 868 and other frequencies. Uh, and then um, we gave them the software modem, and then they just based they put it on the application layer and have been monitoring the inputs and outputs uh, and interrupts from the devices. So this one is basically for the 2.4 LoRa one. Uh, where you are then having the abstraction layer going into radio planet or handling multiple um, uh, protocols, in this case, the 2.4 or subject. And then you have the service um, uh, supervisors and then actually how it interacts with the, the, the process on basic API commands. And then that is transparent to the, to the gateway. It has its own service port. It sends it up into the application uh, where it's integrated. Uh, on the application server. So I think you could say that LoRa actually surprised me uh, because you were very, very confident uh, how it was working on a ship. I was also very surprised how good actually LoRa ecosystem is and how good we are tuned and how easy it is to tackle this massive uh, project in such a short time. So I think I'm running out of my presentation uh, now. But we are having a, the two demos upstairs where we are looking at um, the system, uh, also in the booth. But um, the 2.4 network server uh, is available today. You can just go in and register and create your account as you always have done. You go and select the, basically the 2.4 SKU uh, and connect the Multitech gateway and up you are running. So go and register. Uh, Semtech, we have development kits. Uh, if you want single channel, we have software available so you can upload to the standard de dev kits uh, to test out if you're a sensor provider. So I think it's time for question. Yes, of course, we have ample time for questions. Anyone? Oh, over there, yeah. Hello, yeah, please stand up. Hi. Um, the question was, how many sensors were you looking at for the total ship? So, we, first of all, we had to put in sensors to document uh, behavior uh, and coverage is not enough. So we brought in a lot on, of network analyzers and bit error testers in to cover the whole and we walked around and did a lot of measurements throughout the journey. Then we identified um, weak spots on the ship where we had the worst case scenarios. And we installed 32 sensors uh, on different spots uh, and let them run and monitoring the packet rate, signal to noise ratio, how it's in fact, uh, influenced, if or not, by other radio equipment, Wi-Fi, uh, radar equipment, and so on the ship. So it was low number of devices uh, that has been running to, for confirmation after doing a very thorough survey. Yeah, but um, if you go into full operations, what would be the number of sensors you were looking at? So for ship is really divided into many types of classes, but uh, on a Roro ship like this, we estimate between 1,000 to 2,000 sensors uh, on condition monitoring style, plus you have the ability on other types of ship as well as Roro, for the asset and cargo on, on the ship. So okay. you're talking about, uh, I think you said in before that a ship usually have around 8,000 measuring points that you are wired and some are not connected. But in total, that is probably the maximum capacity, isn't it? Yes, correct. But if, if you take a cruise ship, 
you have a ship and you have a five star hotel. So you can combine it, you can, you can just imagine what you can put into the hotel. And you have the ship, so I think we started with like 200 sensors uh, for a ship as a starter. But also in this uh, one operation, uh, we need to collect signals. So then we can use uh, from uh, a signal converter to LoRa. And we can uh, then transfer the signal wireless rather than pulling a lot of cables. Okay, uh, there's a question way in the back and going over there, I might announce that, as you said, the marketing team is here. And if you're a fan of Laura everywhere, you can get one of these cool pins for your chest. Uh, I saw one hand being raised here in the back. Who was that? Oh, yeah, over there. Hello. Uh, my question is, um, oh, the delay is confusing. Um, what kind of confused me was that you had like three sensors in very close proximity to each other. And I think you already answered that, that you might cable them later on and gather them in, uh, in one module, in one uh, microcontroller unit. But um, what's also confusing to me is uh, that you use batteries when there's power everywhere, because of course batteries are resources that are critical. Um, <laughs> and if you don't mind, I'll already run. I will try to, I'm not sure if I quite that. understood it, but the first one, we, uh, Semtech, we are committed to LoRa, uh, no doubt. Uh, sometimes uh, when it comes to driving, so the merchant fleet is around 70,000 ships. You have 2,200 locations. And we think starting with a low capacity gateway uh, is the way to go, to have low cost solutions. Um, and then Semtech, as soon as uh, there is official approval uh, for the Delora One specification, we will come with an announcement of further roadmaps. When it comes to uh, confusion about the number of, um, or why use batteries, because there is power everywhere. Uh, it's not uh, power everywhere. It is also, again, um, not very cost efficient to connect a low cost device, have a technician to install it. That has been why I think in your world, condition monitoring hasn't kicked off because of the cost of dragging cables. We can go into that in the use case, but Willemsen have not had time to, or can afford to install it wider. And one more question over here. Yes, my question is uh, with the 136 dB uh, link budget and the vessel is a very special environment for um, IoT. So. What range do you expect in not so metal environment? Did you do some testing? Yes, we have. We have all the networks where we have it deployed. Um, but I would say one of the things that surprised me in Vessel is just what is said. Uh, 2.4 is just bouncing everywhere. Uh, and it's like a tiny hole is just propagate on the other side. So it's quite interesting to see how the, this received signal is on a vessel where it start extremely well. And then it's just a logic step down and you have no linear uh, kind of RSSI signals, it goes stepwise. So yes, we did have a deployment in a harbor in Ireland, um, and uh, basically 2.4 there uh, is, I, I can't talk about this, the installation, but it's kind of a seven kilometer range uh, on surface level, uh, line of sight uh, with 2.4. But uh, we have done a lot, I would say that, what I would say in General, one-tenth if you are in urban environment of what you see in, in sub-gig with higher data rates. And again, another question here in the back. Thank you. I have a question related to the return on investment for this particular project. You had some data on uh, metrics that you're collecting from condition monitoring. I'd love to understand the operational efficiencies that you've seen so far, ideally some numbers associated with what you're seeing for benefits? Yes, don't we all, and that is what we have done, because that is why I teamed up with Willemsen. Because Willemsen is not having only their own fleet, they're also operating the other people, so they know exactly the cost of everything on the ship and the priorities and how to do it. I'm not going to present the figures today, but Jon Helge, he said, here is the cost, 
and it's quite many millions savings per year just for condition monitoring of those 64 fans. So we have done a quite a good ROI calculation per application. And that is all because that is their bread and butter today. They know inside out. It's not a technology push, it's actually a use case push to the technology. Okay, guys, uh, time's up, but you do have a workshop at one o'clock, right? Yep. Also about the 2.4 gigahertz. Yes, hands-on experience and more details, also about the business case. Okay, very well. And, and if they can't go there, you'll all be around for questions, right? Yeah, and also come to the Semtech booth or the Multitech booth. Uh, we have the demos up and running. You can play and ask and walk around even here in this uh, building and test and experience your range itself. Thank you very much, Stanley Peterson and the rest of the Laura at Sea team. Thank you very much. Thanks.